Layla Ahmed is an Egyptian-American writer on Islam and Islamic feminism. She became the first professor of women's studies and religion at Harvard Divinity School in 1999, and had held the Victor S. Thomas Professor of Divinity Chair since 2003. In 2013, Ahmed received the University of Louisville Grawmeyer Award in Religion for her analysis of the veiling of Muslim women in the United States. Born in the Heliopolis district of Cairo to a middle-class Egyptian father and an upper-class Turkish mother in 1940, Ahmed's childhood was shaped both by Muslim Egyptian values and the liberal orientation of Egypt's aristocracy under the ancien era till the copyright time. After Egypt's last ruling monarch was overthrown by the Free Officers Movement in 1952, Life for Ahmed's family along with others in her milieu was irrevocably changed. Her father, a civil engineer, was a strong opponent of Gamal Abdel Nasser's construction of the Aswan High Dam on ecological principles. This earned him the wrath of the ruling regime for years to follow, and had detrimental effects on the family. She earned her doctorate degree from University of Cambridge during the 1960s, before moving to the United States to teach and write where she was appointed to professorship in Wamina Rest Studies and Near Eastern Studies at the University of Massachusetts Amherst in 1981 followed by a professorship in Women's Studies and Religion at the Harvard Divinity School in 1999, where she currently teaches. In her 1999 memoir A Border Passage, Ahmed describes her multicultural caring upbringing and her adult life as an expatriate and an immigrant in Europe and the United States. She tells of how she was introduced to Islam through her grandmother during her childhood, and she came to distinguish it from official Islam as practiced, and preached by a largely male religious elite. This realization would later form the basis of her first acclaimed book, Women and Gender in Islam, a seminal work on Islamic history, Muslim feminism, and the historical role of women in Islam. Ahmed speaks of her experience in Europe and the United States as one that was often fraught with tension and confusion as she tried to reconcile her Muslim Egyptian identity with Western values. Faced with racism and anti-Muslim prejudice, and after deconstructing traditionalist male-centered beliefs in her own culture, she set out to dispel equally damaging myths and misconceptions held by the West about Islam and Muslim women. Today, Ahmed is perhaps known most widely for her groundbreaking work on the Islamic view of women, and their historical and social status in the Muslim world. Ahmed has been a strong critic of Arab nationalism in Egypt and the Middle East. She devotes an entire chapter in her autobiography on the question of Arab nationalism, and the political factors and efforts which went into constructing an Arab identity for Egypt after the army's coup d'apostrophe till the Copyright Act. According to Ahmed's research, the idea that Egyptians were Arab was virtually unheard of well into the 20th century. She describes Arab nationalism, like many other forms of pan-nationalism, as a type of cultural imperialism. This cultural imperialism eats away at the diversity and cultural creativity of, not only the Arabic-speaking national majorities, but also the non-Arabic-speaking minorities throughout the Middle East and North Africa. A hierarchical structure is the basis of male-slash-female relations, a gender-based-slash-sexual hierarchy. Islamic doctrine developed within an androcentric, misogynist society, that of Abbasid Iraq, the customs of which were largely inherited from the Sasanian Empire after its conquest. This society emphasized and institutionalized the gendered hierarchical voice, and silenced the voice of equity and justice. Islam as a religion therefore became a discourse of the politically dominant elite, i.e., male society. There were early signs of resistance to establishment Islam. For example, the thoughts of Sufi and Karmatians groups, philosophers such as Ibn al-Arabi, and the liberal stance of powerful families and individuals towards their daughters in respect of marriage and education, 